Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient who has been on Coumadin for a short while and had a sudden change of mentation, became disoriented and then non-responsive. And so what we see here is hemorrhage. Now it's important to be able to characterize where the hemorrhage is located. It could be extraaxial or intraaxial. This is predominantly intraaxial, meaning within the substance of the brain. A portion of it here overlying the left frontal lobe is extraaxial. That's probably a combination of subdural and subarachnoid blood, just a hemorrhage that extrudes from the substance of the brain into the overlying space. Here you see something in the corpus callosum. You can see this hemorrhage right here, and it's right next to the body of the right lateral ventricle. You can see that there's midline shift. It's always a good idea to measure midline shift, and I won't do it here, but what you do is you drop a line between this midline structure here and then the midline uh, structure here, and you draw a straight line, and then you measure the distance between the midline here. This is actually the midline structure that has been pushed over to the right side quite a bit. You can see a small amount of blood in the lateral ventricle. So we have a good, oh, I'm going to guess one, two and a half, three centimeters of midline shift, which is a huge amount of midline shift. You can see how the cisternal space on the left is a little enlarged, and that's because the brain stem itself is being pulled over toward the right or pushed over toward the right. The right lateral ventricle is dilated, and that's because the right lateral ventricle empties into the third ventricle, which you can't even see here because it's so obliterated by pressure from this large intraparenchymal hemorrhage. This little slit that has blood in it is probably the third ventricle, and so either the connection from the right lateral ventricle to the third ventricle or the third ventricle itself uh, or both are locations of the obstruction that's causing this right lateral ventricle to dilate. You can see the left lateral ventricle is not dilated. Here's the temporal horn of the left lateral ventricle. And this, few people would realize, uh, but this is actually corpus callosum. Corpus callosum wraps around the third ventricle and is a midline structure and it's a large, very large band of connections between the two hemispheres and this location here being between the two lateral ventricles even though both are displaced toward the right. It's kind of hard to see the anatomy there, but that is a corpus callosal hemorrhage. So you can also see that there is mass effect, and this is what we call sulcal effacement. The left cerebral hemisphere, we have loss of the sulci. On the right, we have nice sulcal markings, S-U-L-C-A-L, sulcal markings of the, the meaning the sulci, S-U-L-C-I, are visible, whereas on the left, because of mass effect, these potential spaces, these sulci, are effaced, and you see little or nothing of them because of this massive mass effect in the left cerebral hemisphere. So a very large hemorrhage in a patient on, cumid, in, on Coumadin with predominantly an intraparenchymal hemorrhage in the left cerebral hemisphere, predominantly in the frontal lobe, a smaller adjacent component of extraaxial blood, which is 
probably a combination of subarachnoid and subdural. It generally appears as a subdural, but since there's an intraparenchymal hemorrhage, and that intraparenchymal hemorrhage would have to traverse the subarachnoid space in order to get to the subdural space, uh, this is probably a combination of subarachnoid and subdural blood that's causing this extra axial, meaning outside the limits of the brain, this extra axial blood. Okay, that's about it for now.